I had a nice day of caregiving today. This is one of the last days that I will ever be caregiving. Well, who knows what I'll come back to in life. I really made sure to leave on a good note with this caregiving agency because I really would like the option to still be open if I ever want to go back to it. It's a nice fallback. I know that I can do it. You know, it just doesn't have room in my life right now. And my caregiving shift today was with a gentleman who has been quite difficult in some past shifts. Very difficult some days. Um, in ways that I don't need to get into the details of. He's just, he's just quite hard to work with sometimes. At the same time, being super easy. I mean, it's, it's funny that, like, even the hardest caregiving shifts are, like, they could still be really easy. Like, it's, there's still a lot of downtime where you don't have to do very much. There's still... They're still less taxing on you in a lot of ways than even the best day working in a customer service job. But I actually had a very genuinely good time with him, especially in the morning, because he wanted me to help him write a letter. I don't know who the letter was supposed to be written to. It didn't really make that clear, which is kind of a funny thing. But I was uh, willing to still transcribe his words as best I could. I mean, he he rattled off stuff so quickly, and I had to, I had to say, "Okay, can we can we pause for a second so I can like catch up?" And I I didn't write it word for word, but I did my best to give an interpretation that was still true to his word, but also palatable. He is ninety something. His senses are kind of leaving him, and so. He didn't always form perfect sentences. He used to, he would write his own letters and then he reads them and he can't even follow his own handwriting or syntax. It's all over the place and super hard to read, even for him, which I just love uh, because it's very relatable. I don't even understand myself. But what this letter consisted of was it started off with a little bit of saying, hey, you know, I'm still kicking it here at the age of 90 something, whoever I'm writing to. And then after that, he just went into a whole lot of a whole lot of scripture. He's a very devout Christian. He's a former chaplain, and he just had me transcribe him quoting some verses in the Bible, and then you know his little interpretation of it. What I thought was really interesting is that he knows the Bible so well that certain verses he could just like pull out of the air. I guess that's pretty common with people who are pretty devout. But it's just like I can't do that for the life of me. I know John three sixteen. I think I could say that verbatim. But that is it. Actually, there's one, the 2 Corinthians 4.18 is one that I really love. Um, it's like, we focus not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That's, uh, that's something that still sticks with me really strongly. It's when I'm getting caught up on my, on my physical appearance. But yeah, transcribed this for him, and it was actually really interesting. It was actually really interesting. People quoting scripture can make me clench my fists a little bit. I can I can get very, very cynical and making fun of them in my head very quickly. But, yeah, it was a nice little, it was mostly going into what the Holy Ghost in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost really means. And the application of the principle that there are these three different entities that were sort of looking up to. And the Holy Spirit is one that I just never really understood. And he puts it really he put it really well and quoted a couple interesting passages that made it a bit more clear for me. And also what in his mind rebirth means, you know, being born again. Uh it there's still a little part of me that wants to get really cynical when I hear that kind of stuff. Uh, but it was also really inspiring listening to him. I mean, whether I think it's right or wrong, like literally just correct or incorrect. I love that he is very passionate about this. I love seeing people be passionate about things. And I mean, I can't really criticize. I can't really criticize religious people, at least not in the way that I maybe used to, because I get passionate about things. I get passionate, especially about spirituality. I mean, that's a thing that like is very, very important to me. And it is very easy for me to feel ashamed and woo woo and nonsensical about because I have been raised in a pretty, you know, in a pretty materialistic Western um, science is the most correct thing kind of kind of upbringing. And so 
it means so much to me. And I like to even just wax spiritual. I like to just, I like to just journal things that I feel like are taking me nowhere, but just, oh, that man, that feels and sounds good. Little Zen riddle-ish kind of things I write down. And, uh, I mean, I can't hold on. I think mean, it's, it's, it's not so much like, it's not that I need to defend it. It's just like my stuff is allowed to be sacred to me and his and anybody else's stuff is allowed to be sacred to them. And I just, I, I have to give people that permission because it's what makes me the happiest with the world. Makes me the happiest with myself. Yeah. There's just, there's so many opportunities I'm seeing lately. When I'm really, really mad at somebody and I really want to get back at them, man, I will just start feeling better about you. Then you can't hurt me.